<coughs> Thank you, Luca. So uh, my intervention will be some kind of continuation of the discussion we had after the uh, the first session. It will combine some uh, questions that all of uh, Mislav and Domago raised. The Mislav has asked the question: uh, What kind of economic propositions left should propose in situation where the, where the left is in very defensive and weak uh, position, and also the uh, what was Domago talking about, about the, the structure of the uh, European Union, its history, uh, its uh, institutional uh, framework, and the, and also this uh, question that uh, was raised up uh, in the discussion about what to do in the uh, concerning this, as Tipe said, false dilemma between the national level and the uh, European level. Uh, my aim is to, concerning this kind of uh, existing uh, propositions or solutions of programs to resolve the uh, euro crisis from the left. Uh, my, my aim is to introduce some kind of uh, new set of uh, criteria that will be some kind of political and historical uh, criteria how to valorize these propositions uh, to add some another layer to this uh, layer of uh, some kind of economic uh, uh, rationality. That is, uh, on the funda in the fun fundamental sense, uh, I would try to ask the question, what's the uh, proper political relation between, uh, from the left perspective, of the uh, economic rationality and uh, the urge to democratize uh, uh, the, uh, the political field? Uh, so I will, I will try just, uh, uh, I will present two uh, these two uh, solutions of uh, proposition that were made on uh, European academic uh, academic left, not in entirely, but just uh, to see what was the main difference from this perspective, or from this political and historical perspective. Uh, this is a proposition that uh, also it was mentioned today uh, by uh, Varoufakis and Colin, this modest proposal, this case one that Domago explained it, and the other one is from the other Greek uh, economists, it's very, maybe the most valuable uh, 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 the, the other Greek economic discussions, uh, Lapanitsas, whose, whose strategy is opposite uh, to the uh, Varoufakis, but I will not compare them in, in a sense of uh, economic technical details, but I will, try, I will try to compare them in a sense what kind of uh, political action do they imply uh, as, a, as, a, as a social condition of realization of this. Uh, of this uh, of these programs, uh, so we can say that in the, in the without too much caution that after the four years of the crisis that the left has, the left has done a very good job analytical job, especially considering the specificities of the crisis of the of the eurozone. So there's a few very remarkable analyses. One is already mentioned Lapavitsas and his project and his comrades his comrades on project research on money and finance. Yanis Varoufakis or we can also mention, let's say, Ricardo Bellafiore with the thesis of German New Mercantilism. And we can witness the success and relevance of this, of this analysis uh, in the sense that they are uh, present and knowledge in the mainstream academic field and also in the journalist, journalist circles and so on. But all of these uh, analyses uh, imply more or less, in some terms, explicit, uh, any, some kind of solutions to the to, to the crisis of the of the eurozone, uh, the main difference, uh, because we sh should uh, first we should introduce new some factors uh, in the discussion that are that, that are crucial to understand these uh, these propositions. First, we, we should consider the historical trajectory of the left in the last thirty or forty years, because we have to know that they are talking from the, from the academic. Perspective. They are not uh, members of the forum <laughs> board of some party or some organization, and that's the crucial difference. And uh, we, we have to, know, uh, to, to take into consideration the process of academization of the left in the last 30 or 40 years to put some uh, more uh, social framework to the uh, to the discussion, especially this uh, this uh, the uh, the. Uh, way the, the workers, workers' struggles and the intellectual uh, development of the left were, were completely, um, uh, I miss the word, uh, all the, uh, separate. Separate, yes, thank you. 
So the, the fundamental question concerning these two uh, propositions is suggested is who is the implicit or the explicit addressee of these of these uh, propositions and solutions how to how to deal with the crisis uh, of the eurozone? Who is this implied political subject that will deal with that, that will deal with the crisis? Who, who will be this? Uh, subject of the re realization of these uh, uh, propositions. And especially concerning the, to the uh, institutional structure of the uh, of the Eurozone, concerning the, what Stephen mentioned in the discussion <coughs> before, this kind of division of labor between uh, nation states and uh, nation states and the institutions of the uh, European Union, as was already mentioned, the, when we uh, look at the, uh, the process of institutionalization of the European Union in the last uh, 20 years, we must, do, we must do analyze it from the perspective of the, of the global capitalist history and from the perspective of uh, neoliberal country revolution. And, and it's obvious that EU institutions served as a mechanism to bypass the, the institutions of the, of the nation state in which the gains of the uh, working class struggle were inscribed in the institution of the nation state, as Stipe explained in the uh, in the discussion after the the first session, and in uh, we can discuss that later. Continue this discussion about national and uh, supranational level, but uh, the besides this institutional framework, where to do it, it this kind of division of labor ha has its ideological ha effects. O also. In term, when you are building organization, you are building a mass movement. How to mobilize? Uh, how to mobilize people in certain countries? How the, this idea of Europe functions uh, as a ideolo ideological mechanism, but also as a, some kind of uh, ideolo ideological weapon. Because in the last 20 years, after the Maastricht Treaty, especially in the periphery, the, the idea of Europe serves as some kind of uh, mythical uh, mythical reference. It serves like a, a compensation for uh, for the processes of further uh, narrowing the democratic process in the European Union. So, and also, I will, in the end, uh, talk a little bit about uh, our experiences in Croatia. Uh, we had a referendum uh, in the in January, and this, we started some kind of uh, campaign before the referendum in in the initiative informal initiative called democratic initiative against the european union and our, our aim was to to introduce uh, the left critique of the european union in a, in a public space because there was no because of this uh, ideological configuration uh, nationalism uh, liberalism that was dominant and still dominant in croatia there was no such thing as a left critique of the european union so I'll talk a little about uh, about that at the end because uh, to show what are this, this kind of uh, ideological traps and ideological difficulties that you uh, uh, that you have when you are dealing with this, uh, these problems and uh, we should not uh, uh, put them uh, on the side because uh, if you want to uh, make a strong organizations and uh, introduce and realize all this uh, uh, radical social programs, as, as Misa said, we should also uh, think uh, in terms of agitation, education, mobilization of, of people, and in that field, these ide ideological difficulties are very are, are the crucial issue. So now we go back to these uh, two propositions from Varoufakis and uh, Lapavitas. Also from the from the from the crucial question, the crucial perspective: who is this? Uh, who is the implied address other C of their uh, proposition? So. Uh, on a few days, maybe two weeks ago, on his famous, uh, already famous blog, uh, Yanis Varoufakis uh, wrote an uh, answer to the critique of his modest proposal. It was not critique just of his modest proposal, but uh, I don't know, uh, Eve Smith made a critique of uh, uh, these panelists on this INET conference in Berlin concerning the question of uh, democratic uh, deficit in the European Union and the uh, role of democratic participation in the proposed solution how to deal with the, uh, with the crisis. So as, uh, uh, Smith said, uh, it is worth noting that one of the questions after the various presentations of the Eurozone mess raised the issue of democratic deficit. 
uh, the various speakers endorsed the idea of getting public approval, but they implicitly or even explicitly acknowledged that it would be after the fact. Mm -hmm. So since when do you approve a fat and cop? So that, that was his uh, critique, uh, where Fakis accepted the uh, critique with, with the disclaimer that uh, he, he can have much time because of a sh short uh, presentation. Uh, but uh, he also he tried to uh, reply in this uh, uh, post on his uh, on his blog concerning that these three fundamental uh, his argument was that these three fundamental policies or his proposal, like you know, I'm going to explain uh, in the previous uh, lectures in the previous lecture, public uh, debt management by the ACB investment like recovery and rebalancing uh, program is called uh, surplus like recycling uh, mechanism on the on the level of the European Union and unification of the Eurozone banking sector. And we're focused to claim that, uh, that all three policies is here. Notice that all three uh, policy or programs, it recommends the modest proposal to solve the crisis, involve moves to be taken by, by Europe's existing as institution, which will uh, know how to carry a lot more of a burden compared to national governments, but in a manner that robs them of, as opposed to granting them additionally, discretionary power. So uh, Varoufakis' argument was that this kind of new uh, economic uh, arrangements, uh, economic uh, programs, will imply the process of democratization of the uh, current European uh, institutions. He also acknowledged that this is not enough, and he concludes uh, uh, his, uh, his reply to uh, to Eve Smith, with the words, uh, Eve Smith was right. We should have addressed the question of the democratic deficit, and we did not. Some, because as economists, our minds cannot see beyond prices and quantities, while, while others, because we just did not have the time. In the preceding text, I explained that which I missed out in my talk regarding the way our modest proposal deals quite effectively with the democratic deficit in the process of arresting Eurozone banking crisis. Its debt crisis and the hidden crisis due to under it under investment and to the ever increasing internal imbalance of payments. Having said all this, democracy is a fragile flower that can never fully bloom, while social power is distributed so liberally toward those with a near monopoly on the value extraction process. So the crucial formulation, I think, and uh, symptomatic in this last sentence, is that while social power is distributed so liberally towards uh, those, it's, uh, it's functional like a euphemism for uh, the working class is losing the uh, class, class struggle, but fundamentally it means uh, dem democracy will always be in deficit if we do not de democratize the process of production. So, th but that's one step further from this, as Varoufakis explained, in inevitable co uh, consequences of the programs of modest pro 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 proposal concerning the uh, status of the d democracy in the institutions of of the EU. And now we arrive to the fundamental question, who is the other C of the Varoufakis proposal? Unfortunately, I think that the uh, other C of the Varoufakis proposal is the rationality of the European elites. Or well, to put it more uh, in Marxist terms, the class cautions of the, of the European uh, bourgeoisie. Uh, it's not only this proposal, he's, when he's all talking about his in the interviews and uh, all other party comparisons, he's always talking about logical problems in Troika's uh, solutions, how they don't get it. So, uh, the question, uh, the fundamental problem with this proposal is that uh, Varoufakis is uh, disregard, disregarding, but I think consciously, he, because of that, that's part of his strategy, I think the best way to treat it is that Varoufakis is in a position of, of a one-man uh, one party, you know, he, he really, he used some tactics for that parties use how to introduce themselves in the, in the public sphere. But the main problem is disregard the class relations behind, behind the whole institutional uh, setup of the European Union. Uh, not, of course, not because he doesn't uh, know about it or something like that, but he thinks that uh, in this uh, current situation, that is the best way uh, to do it. As Domingo said in the in previous lecture, is some time to, for the for the working class to buy time to to, to, to strengthen their uh, their position. So we we have to read this proposal uh, in a sense that is uh, a short term uh, short term relation from the 
uh, short-term solution for the crisis uh, of the eurozone. If, if our, of course, if our perspective is uh, social tra transformation of the, of the whole continent or uh, uh, or whatever. So, but I think we uh, that I think that Varoufakis is consciously risking this uh, uh, this problem, and also one of key motivations for him to to introduce this kind of. Uh, uh, this kind of pro proposal, uh, not just just proposal, but the, as I said uh, before a few times, uh, the fundamental uh, issue is this address of his uh, proposal, not the social movement, not the working class, not the existing parties, but the rationality of the of the uh, of the elites. But I think the, maybe the crucial motivation behind this uh, proposal is his fear of the rise of uh, of fascism. If if the current situation uh, in the eurozone, uh, moves on like, like it did uh, uh, till now, because as we all know, within the monetary strategy Act and the new fiscal pact, uh, the nation states are the only, the only mechanism they have uh, is in the complete, of course, uh, liberalized trade. The only mechanism they have to uh, to somehow improve their position is to attract capital through through uh, lowering taxes and cheapening uh, uh, the labor force and this uh, social Darwin is uh, raised to the bottom uh, inevitably because the rise uh, of, of the fascism but I think maybe uh, that's you know that's a tactical or strategic solution what to do from the left the problem is that Varoufakis is, is imagining uh, some kind of uh, non-existing left some kind of you know ep um, epistemolo epistemological framework Without any kind of social or, or political uh, uh, fun fundament in it, in the sense of the movement and, and the political uh, and, and political parties of and uh, organizations, so the crucial problem that arises uh, here uh, from the analytical perspective uh, is the how to uh, how to articulate how to how to put in the framework the relation between economic rationality. Economic rationality in, in, implying all this, you know, stuff that uh, you know, Misa was talking uh, about. This is we are this this position. This is position of the banking sector. We don't have resources. How to deal with that and all this stuff. And also uh, the relation between economic rationality and and the uh, uh, process of uh, democratic participation of of, of the working class in the, in the decision making. Uh, that, that is a crucial question that we have to deal with from the left perspective, especially in this time when the left is uh, very weak in, in the political and the social uh, sense, but it has uh, proper instruments and tools for the, for the analysis uh, uh, situation. But it, that's a very paradoxical uh, position, and we always have to uh, position this uh, analysis, however they were radical or not, in the context of the uh, relations and balances in, or imbalances of uh, social forces. Uh, on the other hand, Lapovica's uh, position is uh, different. Uh, his uh, proposition, his solution to the uh, uh, resolution of the Eurozone crisis, especially from the Greek perspective, is uh, to Greece to leave the Eurozone uh, and, to, and, to, uh, and to go on its own, but uh, the crucial difference between the Lapovitsas and Varoufakis, I will not go into the economic stuff in, in this, this kind of pure sense, but the crucial difference is that in his analysis and, and in his uh, uh, propositions that is applied and is articulated after the analysis, Lapovitsas other C is democratic social mass, mass movement as a, as a political subject that that one needs, if this propo uh, if this uh, economical political proposition is to be re realized. Uh, so, uh, as Ra as Lapovita said in one of his uh, polemics concerning the this question of uh, or to struggle on the European level or to struggle on the national level, Lapovita said a radical left strategy for both core and periphery would comprise transitional transitional measures in the most profound sense of the term. His precise character would depend on the social forces that would be mobilized to support it and on the types of struggle that would emerge. But the great merit of the strategy is that it could change the balance of forces against capital, 
creating better conditions to resolve, is to resolve issues of distribution, growth, and employment. In this respect, a radical left alternative would create a favorable enver environment for social exchange by improving the social and economic conditions for workers. There is no need for such a strategy, strategy to lead to isolationism and nationalism, provided that the European left regained a modicum of confidence in itself and in its historic arsenal of socialist ideas. Indeed, the danger of a nationalist backlash is likely to become worse as long as the left continues to disappoint, disappoint working people. Good Euro proposals offer no means of stopping the ruthless reassertion of class and imperial interests in the Eurozone. A strategy that confidently detached itself from the failing project of monetary union would provide a basis for solidarity among European people. For that, the left would have to abandon Europeanism, the official ideology that has for long counted its uh, collective mind. So, the crucial, as I mentioned earlier, the crucial difference is that Lapovitsis is presupposing the strength uh, of the left. He's, he's, also, he's also playing with this kind of, you know, in, in, in some, some sense, in, in the imaginary, uh, imaginary field, but he, uh, his, his uh, solution to this dilemma between the economic rationality and democratic, part uh, and, uh, democratic participation is more uh, on this uh, other side, because uh, because if, the, if we are narrowing the, the space of economic uh, rationality, inevitably we lose the, the fundamental stuff, we lose, uh, uh, lose the class struggle. The class, uh, struggle. And also, his, uh, I must I, I agree especially with him on this uh, 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 necessity of abandonment of any kind of Europeanism as, as an ide ideology, not only in the sense of uh, how to relate to the issues of the Eurozone with this uh, dilemma where to uh, act on the national of, on the, or the international or, or supranational level, but also in the sense that Europeanism as an idea in political history was never a progressive, a progressive idea. The Europe served uh, and still is one of the imperialist uh, uh, power and if we introduce all these uh, in, introduce all these uh, questions in, in uh, in the discussion, also we have to uh, speak up what is with what is uh, relations of the European uh, states to its uh, nearby uh, to its nearby neighbors. So, and we have to involve this uh, problem of uh, European imperialism also, and the role that uh, Euro Europeanism, as as some kind of uh, mythical category, Europe as a mythical category, what kind of uh, uh, problems on the ideological level of creating a mass uh, mass movement uh, in it. so uh, the problem is, is how to uh, combine uh, in in a, in, a, in a political strategy this kind of immediate economic measures that would help uh, to the condition of, of the working class and how to combine that with a prediction on the future class struggle. And what, and also, it is a crucial thing. What kind of how to, how to what kind of effects will your prediction? If we, uh, if we suppose that you are talking from the position of the of, of the, some kind of relevant political party organization or movement, uh, what kind of effect, effects will your predi predi uh, prediction have uh, in this in, in this class struggle in terms of its uh, of its uh, performativity? Uh, so, and also considering this uh, crucial question between economic rationality and uh, democratic participation, uh, it's, it's, that's, that is, I think, the process uh, we can uh, compare it to the questions of relation between, in, in an ideological sense, uh, between during the real existing socials between central planning. Uh, and uh, and self as, and self management as a kind of fundamental contradiction uh, in this uh, social uh, in the period of existing socialism, because you cannot, of course, uh, overthrow capitalism overnight, and capitalism as a, as a, includes a history of uh, in egalitarian distribution of knowledge, so called expertise. <laughs> so that is not possible to be changed overnight to introduce the complete democratic participation of, uh, of everybody. So you have to always deal with this 
kind of contradiction when you're dealing with some kind of social transformative project or when you're introducing some kind of radical social pro programs from above. That, that also implies uh, further questions uh, about the way how the uh, new political organizations or party had to be organized. So, and just to, uh, so th that will be the issues I want to be all the discuss and to uh, continue uh, this discussion that, that was uh, uh, whirling around this uh, question of, of the level of uh, action and, uh, and political actions and, po and organization on the concerning the question of the national states and, and Europe and also the, uh, this question of uh, modest life proposal that was Lisa talked about and I agree with him completely about that you cannot propose uh, that the, 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 the solution that you proposed that should not be valorized in terms of uh, radicality, of, in terms of radicalism from the, some kind of uh, art historical perspective of the left struggle, but you have to uh, uh, introduce the, 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 the historicize the position of the left in the current situation. That I, I want to say that economic analysis, especially economic proposals, current situations, uh, their coherence is. Uh, th their strength is not in internal coherence, coherence and empirical uh, evidence. Uh, their strength is basic, is in fundamental way based in its uh, social truths and social uh, uh, the balance of the social uh, so social forces. So uh, maybe I will uh, uh, put this kind of discussion about situation uh, before the Croatian referendum and uh, discussion that would a uh, few of us here were took place in it for the discussion after the, my uh, presentation, so maybe I will stop here and I think it's much more uh, productive to, to discuss this issue. issue. My aim was just to introduce a uh, different perspective on this, uh, slight, slightly different perspective and to, to, to put another framework uh, into this discussion. I think that the, to discuss this would be much more productive than to go for the results. Thank you, Marco. Uh, do you have any questions or comments uh, on this lecture? Sasha, yes. Uh, so if, you, if you put this, uh, no problem, in uh, epistemological terms as you did, uh, I mean, of course, uh, the subject uh, that is addressed by both proposers mm -hmm. is actually yet non-existing. I mean, socialist uh, Greece does not yet exist as well as, uh, I know, Europe with a human face does not yet exist. Uh, but uh, I don't think, I mean, but this question we could, can be resolved only we, in practice. It yeah, cannot be resolved in theory. Uh, but uh, I think that uh, in case of uh, the practices in the Holland proposal, this uh, proposal by itself does not basically exclude, uh, I don't know, class struggle or uh, movements. I mean, it doesn't prevent them. I mean, mass movements on the European level can coexist with the implementation of this, uh, of their proposal. So, uh, I mean, but if you look uh, at this proposal in uh, detail, I mean, the first point of it is that, I don't know, some debt should be centralized, that, uh, I don't know, 60% of debt uh, of the liberal or uh, uh, even other countries should be transferred on the ECB's balance sheets, and then, I mean, if, the, if this is the case, then uh, uh, peripheral countries would get some kind of a political channel uh, through which they could, uh, there could be uh, some mediation and uh, where those uh, peripheral countries could get a voice. And uh, the third uh, part of this program is actually large uh, public investments in, uh, in education and in health. I mean, this uh, program could, uh, and coincide with the movements against uh, no, privatization of uh, healthcare, against privatization of, uh, of uh, higher education and stuff like that. So uh, I think it does not uh, exclude uh, uh, massive movements by itself. So it can be implemented. Uh, yes, but the question who will really implement it because you know, the German ruling class wouldn't accept it for sure. No. And uh, I think that Varoufakis and anyone else Cannot uh, you know uh, talk to them and uh, make an influence on 
the, because the only way to, to introduce these this, uh, measures and programs that Varoufakis and Hollande are talking about is only through the, uh, through the mass political movement and to, to, through, the, through the struggle, I think. Because I, I, I agree with you that they do not disregard this uh, mass movement, but they are not implying the mass movement as a subject to realize this. To, to push uh, to push the the ruling elites to to, to accept the, the, this program, he's he's addressing the rationality of the of, of the of the of the, of, of the elites as, as a way all, almost as he's uh, talking them. Come on, let's uh, wake up your uh, class conscious. What are you doing? You you will screw yourself if you continue to. He's, it's not, but that, that's the, some kind of. Uh, if, if you uh, read this, uh, his uh, logic of his other seat uh, to the end, I, I agree with you. That I, I don't think that 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 anything that, that fundamental wrong with this proposal. I think it, it's a, some kind of short-term solution. Of course, as if we, if our perspective is, as as Misa said from before, here as radical social programs, here is socialist economy. If our macro perspective is social social economy, these solutions in a sense as a step. As a step further, if we, I think we, we have to completely abandon this false dilemma, reformism, uh, uh, revolution of that kind, because it's, it doesn't make a sense in the current situation or ever. So I think it's, it's a good step forward, but it does not imply a political subject as a working class, mass movement, parties or organizations as, as a fundamental uh, as, as a subject of these uh, changes, but implies the uh, the elites as the one who will do it. As, for I, as I said, I mean, we shouldn't consider this you know, addressing of the subject in terms of the text. I mean, that uh, Varoufakis never wrote uh, in his text, uh, I don't know, uh, that, uh, that he is uh, proposing this uh, to the working class, but on the level of praxis, they can coincide. So, uh, the subject can be important and in, it can address this uh, problem. You know, cool. like, like. Cool. There's two more questions. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah you, you Okay. Uh, well, so uh, if the question is who is the subject of either the Molus proposal or some more radical program, uh, and if the answer is nominally the working class, and I think it is really the working class, but uh, then the question should be, how do we build mass movement? Uh, what should we do to build the mass movement to create the subjects uh, that should carry the uh, any kind of program? Uh, so uh, 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 it is a strategic question. I, I think that the modus proposal, proposal uh, could be integrated in a wider strategy, a more broader strategy uh, of the left. I don't think it's the question of reform versus, reform versus revolution. I think uh, it's not very dialectical to think in those terms that those two are uh, essentially and always opposed to uh, yeah, each other. Yeah. Yes, so uh, the modest proposal can be a transitional demand to restore the confidence and to build up the strength of the labor movement, of the working class movement, uh, and then it comes to the question, how do we build it? How do we restore the confidence uh, 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 of the working class movement? I think that the working class movement in the Balkans, uh, uh, well, at least I know in Serbia, uh, yeah, it, it, it's not very confident. It, it does not believe that it can achieve any victories. I think uh, the way to start building the working class movement that will be the political subject uh, of any program uh, starts uh, from uh, gathering all progressive social forces and uh, winning uh, 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 battles for democratic rights uh, within the Balkans, within, the, within Europe, because if the growth of the power of the uh, European bureaucracy, the Troika and other uh, uh, political bodies, means that uh, if there is a democratic deficit, it means a surplus of repression. It means a surplus of uh, police violence or state violence. So a way forward, I think, it, that might be the, uh, the way forward to rebuilding the working class movement is through gathering all progressive social forces and uh, in the struggle for uh, democratic rights against the Troika power. Yes, well, I, I agree, but uh, I think as we, we talked about in the last uh, discussion, that of course this uh, 
uh, dilemma to, to act on the, the level of the national state or to act on the level of the uh, union is, is false, uh, false dilemma, but I think that we should put that dilemma in a, uh, in a temporal, uh, in a temporal uh, perspective. In a, in a current situation, there are no uh, there are no instruments or institutions in the, on the level of the European Union where the working class can can uh, uh, negotiate, struggle, or achieve or achieve some goals. As Stephen mentioned last discussion, discussion all the gains of the working class movement uh, in the last 50 years are institutions institutionalized and inscribed into the nation uh, nation state. So, so welfare remains remains of the welfare state, social programs, social transfers, some mechanism of distribution uh, distribution of wealth, but. The institutions of the European Union, especially the Eurozone, after the Eurozone and all that, are served as a mechanism of to bypass this uh, this uh, uh, this framework uh, of the of the nation state. And uh, I think that it's it, it isn't possible for now to to act uh, on on the on the European level because uh, there are no there are no there are no space there there, there is no. A space to push up the, the, the elites to 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 influence some kind some kind during the class or to influence the elites to move in, in a more progressive uh, in, in a more progressive in a more progressive way. So I think that, but it does not exclude the coordination and cooperation of the organizations, part trade unions on the on the uh, on, on the European level. It's it's not that this this is some kind of uh, dilemma that I choose this because I like it. That's the historical situation: the left cannot choose, you not know, where where to, where to act. It chooses the it has to act on the on the uh, positions and institutions that are uh, most productive for for the social progressive elites. Any other comments or questions? Well, I think you make a valid point that. Uh, it seldom happens that uh, uh, a good argument counts more than one's own interest. So, uh, documents like the modest proposal, I don't think it's a question of how the German elites are going to uh, uh, understand it and uh, if they're, they're going to uh, acknowledge it or not. I mean, I think we are fairly certain they are going to stick to politics of financialization and you know, uh, mercantilism and so on. So I don't think that's the question. The question is how uh, the workers are going to read this document. So what I'm asking here is, um, it, it, can the modest proposal or uh, similar, similar documents, how much do they count as a rallying point for this uh, new movement that we are now addressing? Because what I see about it is, I mean, two, two things that are being pointed out about it is it, it is elaborate and it is feasible. So, uh, are these the kind of the kinds of words that are supposed to be now at the forefront of a, of a workers' movement in Europe? I mean, um, de definitely, what we can acknowledge about it is that it, it did gain uh, public attention. I mean, it was, uh, if nothing else, there were articles written about it in the Guardian, similar uh, uh, publications. It, it, there were public debates on French national television and so forth. So, I mean. If anything got some attention in Europe, it was this. So yeah, basically I would just like to uh, ask, um, is this the kind of uh, document that can be used as a rallying point or do we need something different? Yes, of course I think it, it can be uh, uh, used. It can be instrumentalized in struggles in, uh, concerning the, in the public space or, or, or concerning in uh, some kind of as an ed educational also uh, 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 mechanism, it could be used. But the crucial question is: is uh, there are lots of these kind of documents that could be used in, uh, in that sense? But this question is: this uh, this circulation of these documents in, in the public sphere and their acknowledgement by the uh, mainstream economists and uh, journalists and Financial Times uh, are are going on this kind of uh, level and uh, social struggles in concerning the question of the organized left are on the on the uh, on the level down there. So it, it, it's it, of course it could be instrumentalized and of course it could be useful for the uh, for the struggle uh, uh, as a document. But as I said before, some some parts of it could be articulated in in, in another discursive manner. But 
as I what I was talking about, that is, and I think that was uh, 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 the bet that uh, Marfax played on. If uh, I think if the uh, the re one of the reasons why it was so, it was it was so acknowledged and present and uh, debated in uh, in academic and German uh, circles is especially is exactly this one that the other C of his uh, proposal are, are the are the is the rationality of the of the, of, of, of the elites. He doesn't he doesn't include this uh, dirty stuff in it. So. Okay. Uh, any other comments or questions? Please. Yeah, I thought first uh, to say that uh, some of the debates which exist in English has not been integrated in the French debate and some French contribution has not been translated. There is a debate with Michel Husson, for instance, with uh, yeah. Maritza, yeah. which should be. Uh, but anyway, uh, I, I, I want to, to stress the fact that, uh, that the first intervention said that uh, uh, the, when you raise the, the question who will be the subject, for, for the social transformation. Uh, it's not yet existing, neither at what was said in the first intervention, neither at the national level nor at the regional level nor at the international level. It has to be built. And we are confronted in, uh, uh, to an historical uh, period of uh, radical uh, uh, systemic crisis where our, <laughs> let us say, our enemy, <laughs> even the bourgeoisie uh, as subject, is not unified and as in find it's uh, uh, even the, the, the level and the, the, the means of, of uh, uh, controlling the whole process. Huh? There, there are big divisions there. Uh, I, I would completely agree with what you said and that's been said in the discussion that the European Union has been built by the bourgeoisie to break uh, even social resistance which existed has been built at the national levels. I have no disagreement with that uh, uh, judgment. But that's not the end of the story. Because you also have uh, national bourgeoisie which refused this first. And second, the, the, the fact that the purpose of the European bourgeoisie, let us say, was what you said, doesn't mean that they controlled the whole issue and that the effects of what that built is unilateral, is only, uh, so they, they, they have succeeded and that they want even to continue to break the national resistance. Huh? Uh, so, and, and I, I said before and I repeat, there is no disagreement among us and there should not be disagreements on the idea that we must use all means of national resistance when they exist. But, one of the key division is xenophobia, racism, and the consciousness uh, of the working, work, working class. Uh, uh, if you build social resistance only at the national level, can be uh, uh, a, a, a xenophobia, a racist consciousness. Huh? Uh, uh, and uh, I, I, I don't say that uh, the uh, only nationalist or national kind of uh, resistance build xenophobia and that European uh, level would avoid this. Both level leads to xenophobia. Because if you accept uh, the treaties, European treaties, as they are, it will increase uh, uh, fascist xenophobia. Uh, but if you resist to them at the nationalist level only, it it's also increases. So, we, we have to break with this false kind of, uh, of, of answer and uh, uh, try to be what we said before, articulation. And some tools are, can be concrete. Uh, some have been uh, stressed. Health issues, uh, education issues. I can add, add a, a, a third level, transport. Um, on uh, transport, there's the car uh, uh, crisis, it's overproduction. And there's both social issue, environmental issue, which at the continental level, uh, there is a rationality to develop, uh, quite a, a restructuring of uh, uh, the question, the transport issue, with both social and environmental aspect. Uh, uh, and, and well, uh, uh, education and, and, and research against Bologna uh, logics of competitions and health, 
because of human rights uh, to be developed also at that level and, and, and so on. So I mean, we can build uh, uh, new <laughs> subjects uh, of resistance through concrete issues of also of those kinds and through building the rebuilding of trade union. For the first time, for the first time, the European trade union, which have been integrated in the building of uh, the, the bourgeois European Union, have taken position in opposition to the new pact for the first time. <coughs> this is, this could, can be also the, the, the turning point because the, the new pact is European. It is not only Euro, it is not only uh, Greece, it is not only peripheral countries. It will be implemented everywhere. And uh, 25 countries have voted for that, but countries, that is leading people, that, you, that we must defeat uh, both at the national level and at the European level. In France, I have no confidence in Holland. Uh, uh, but it's better than Sarkozy, but I have no confidence in Holland. We are building, we must build uh, something, a, relationship, a radical relationship of force with German uh, 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 political and trade union resistance also to, to Merkel and at the European level. It has to be built. Not yes, yes. I, I agree with you completely, and that the, 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 these are parallel processes. These yeah. uh, struggle on the national level and the struggle on the on the broader European level. But uh, from I just wanted to stress emphasis that that somehow the entry maybe entry point in me in the sense that you can gain some first uh, uh, social rights and something that are on the national uh, level. But the, the cru crucial conf uh, thing is that. To gain some uh, such uh, uh, to fight in these struggles from the European perspective, the, I think that the the maybe the trade unions and all the uh, left organizations and all that uh, are maybe not strong enough in this uh, situation to move on completely uh, to emphasize this broader uh, broader. I think it's balance of, of uh, resource, resources that these kind of organizations uh, have and I, I'm just uh, for me it was maybe more the emphasis to somehow to abandon this kind of um, um, uh, ideological uh, misuse of this opposition nation state and, and uh, European uh, level because at the European level we have this kind some kind of uh, fake internationalism that that can be uh, really uh, a problem. So I, I really complete uh, complete agree with you because my intervention was I somehow implied in my uh, intervention that uh, lots of people that I used to talk about it uh, are somehow uh, talking against this uh, fight on the, on the national level because of this uh, completely fake equation of in, in ideological sense, not in terms of uh, uh, Combining the mutual interests of the national bourgeoisie and then the corp on some and, uh, trade unions and work class on the on some kind of corporate level, but it's strong, especially in the periphery. Uh, here on the Balkans, it's strong this kind of uh, ideo ideo ideology of Europeanism uh, as a, some kind of uh, imaginary, uh, imaginary, uh, uh, imaginary ide ideological uh, uh, place. When we enter there, everything will be uh, okay. So my intervention was. Uh, much more in that uh, direction of uh, to fight against this uh, this uh, ide ideological notion in, in Europe that uh, in this in these countries, especially in Croatia and probably in, in Serbia, it's it's really uh, present on, on the left and it's really strong and I think it's 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 really it's really dangerous. Just it, it was intervention in terms of ideological configuration. Uh, in this in the Balkan area concerning the Euro Europe and European Union. So I, I agree completely with you of this balance and the parallel. Uh, one on. question, why, why don't we build another Europe kind? Like, if you only say, I mean, Europeanism is only, uh, it is used in, 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 even in, in the racist way. Huh? Yeah, for well, so mostly in the racist, racist mostly, yeah. Why don't we build the prog progressist content? It, it, there is an aspiration popular aspiration for free circulation at the European level and, and cooperation. Yeah, of course it is, but I think that, that the uh, that current situation on the left, it's, it's strength, we don't have maybe enough strength to, to go on this 
so 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 big uh, so big project. And, th and think if we the the, the level on, on the on the national uh, uh, the uh, the circles on the national level <coughs> somehow imply this kind of European. Uh, uh, should imply this kind of U European uh, cooperative uh, community or something like that. <laughs> I want uh, just to introduce one, one additional dimension because it's, uh, I think it's very important. It's the question of the time frame. Like, uh, it's, it's a, uh, if, if you look, um, it is one thing to debate here in, in um, the relatively privileged environment, you know, what the plans, uh, long term plans may be uh, uh, for, for building uh, a different Europe. But the question for, for let's say, for, for the Greek population at large, it's an immediate crisis of social reproduction. This is how, how the European elites try to resolve uh, to, to prevent the uh, uh, destruction of fictitious capital on a mass scale. So uh, uh, the debt has to be sustained, uh, uh, has to be, uh, the banks have to be saved, and, and the way to do it is austerity, which is uh, transforming a financial crisis into an immediate crisis of social reproduction for, for best less of the population. And if the left is not responding to this, at the immediate level, then the right is stepping, then, okay. then the populist right is stepping. So I don't think that we, uh, we have uh, that privilege uh, that we can say, okay, uh, let's focus on, on the European level. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm not saying that you're implying it. I, 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 agree. I think that we all agree, basically, but we, we must never forget that, that, um, that one additional aspect, the, 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 the dynamics of European integration is basically is a com a competitive. I mean, it, it's a national... Um, um, uh, national economies competing against, uh, against each other uh, to, to attract capital, and that is basically a social Darwinist dynamics, and that can that can then also then um, uh, change into into um, into a politically internationalist uh, framework of thinking, where, where then with, where e each working class, each nation state is pushed into competitive uh, 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 struggle against each <laughs> other. The danger is that they identify with national capital and say uh, the, the the German, uh, as they say, Standort you know, that to secure to secure the German economy's supremacy uh, against uh, Eastern European competitors and so on and so on. So th these are immediate dangers. And I, and if, if we're looking of, um, at, at the election results, not only in France, with the Pen, but, but, uh, but in, in, in different countries like uh, Hungary, or, or if you look at the Denmark, or, or or Finland and, and the Netherlands and so on. I mean, the populist right is is, is the one gaining from, from the crisis. And one, what Marco uh, I'll try to emphasize, the problem here in Croatia, uh, for example, because this, this is the context we know best, is that part of the left is assuming that um, uh, we can skip all, over that, you know, and that we will get rid of the right if we enter uh, uh, the European Union and that will uh, it will dissolve in, into thin air. But, but uh, I, I think the, the, the opposite is, is true. You know, if you're pushed in, if, if the working classes of the, of the periphery are pushed into a, a race to the bottom, which they are losing, Croatia has 20% of unemployment, uh, unemployment rate. That will facilitate the, the uh, <coughs> rising of the right. And the left cannot allow itself to ignore that. Professor Wicks. Yeah, just two quick points. One is, <coughs> on your, I regret to say that I think probably the least painful outcome now for Greece is to withdraw. I think there's probably no doubt about that. I think it's, um, the, it, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't be a pleasant outcome, but it would be better than the others. The other point to make is that, <coughs> I don't know about other countries, but um, in the United Kingdom, where our son is trade union organizer, trade unions are very weak, very weak. Uh, and I think the priority battle has to be to make it easier to organize. It seems to me that needs to be the major demand of the British trade union so that they can get to a position where they can think about the bigger demand. Okay, Tony, uh, two short points. Operationally, we can't do it. So, like uh, John just said, we don't have unions in Croatia which have enough of left button consciousness to send a single delegate in Brussels. If they do so, or anywhere else, they do it on a completely different ground which has nothing to do with the left analysis. So we do not have operational, neither card nor the funds to do so. It randomly happens when people have some funds so they get sent to them or someone just travels around so they report back. So in Croatia it's impossible to do it right now even if they want to. Although maybe that will change as things progress and, and we start to work with unions. And uh, second was Tipe said 20% is official. As you know, 
stats are those who actively look for work and are constantly manipulated. They've been changed five times the last five years in Croatia, slowly tweaked. Uh, and so the real employment, in my view, is close to 30%, and far, it should further that in some regions. Uh, in that situation, it's very, very hard with unions who do almost no militant work from that perspective on that level of, 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 of the problem to project it further when we didn't solve the problem at all. So we don't have a situation where we, unlike France, where you had a long history of both militant unions of different kinds. Okay, uh, pretty much. Um, I would just like a reply to, to this uh, question. I hope it was not rhetorical. Why don't we build another Europe? Um, I think the answer is uh, because Europe, uh, it, there is no, uh, I mean, there is no such thing as Europe. It's an ideological notion and a very problematic one at that. So it, it's not, it's not based on, uh, let's say, concrete mat uh, materialist analysis of social and political and economic circumstances, but it's an ideological projection of assumed cultural or civilizational superiority of Europe. So in itself, when you say, uh, let's do this or that Europe, even with the best intentions, you'll already have some uh, racist or at least proto-racist uh, assumptions. And I think much more, uh, this, is, this is the same as you would put in the 19th century if you would uh, lay it as an alternative to Indian people. Why are you so nationalist? Let's build another more democratic and progressive British Empire. Or for example, to, to Vietnamese people in the beginning of 20th century, let's build another more democratic, progressive. We will have more power if you stay within the French Empire because you can go to Paris and influence uh, the decision making and so on. I mean, in retrospective, for example, um, of course, the, the, the strictly nationalist struggle for national liberation from the colonized people, for example, in Indochina, uh, was it of course uh, also suicidal because they fell from one dependency to another, precisely because they, they were nationalists, they, they fought only within the territory of their, let's say, new, uh, their province or uh, their future nation state to be. But in, uh, if history of the anti-colonial struggle taught us anything, probably taught us that uh, you have to make uh, um, a regional federation. So, of course, just the struggle within the, the limits of a nation state is not enough. But you have to make regional alliances that are based on actual non-ideological materialist uh, analysis, not on some lofty uh, ideological notions such as Europe. So. Um, in, in our concrete case, that would be probably uh, a Mediterranean, uh, some kind of Mediterranean uh, federation, some kind of post-socialist or, uh, say, Eastern European uh, federation, some kind of this regional, uh, regional alliance. I, I don't think the left has, uh, has to, I don't, I don't think there's any use for the contemporary left of the so ideologically uh, polluted and loaded notions such as Europe. Drago, you have replied. Um, we, we have it. I, I, identity still has its function, I mean, uh, as a rallying point, if nothing else. I, I'm glad we turned into the uh, question of history, though. Um, because, uh, well, all, all emancipatory projects of the 20th century had their national components, particularly in the uh, co uh, colonial, uh, colonialist uh, uh, example where they were projects of building nation states in the end. Yeah, but uh, what I would like to ask is, what about, what about the example of Yugoslavia? I mean, it was an example of a, a, a point of building of an identity, but it had a super supranational element with certain, uh, again, emancipatory and political uh, notions within it. But, but Yugoslavia is, the, the, origin, the original sense was the idea of the Bourgeoisie in the 19th century, this preferred bourgeoisie Serbian. That's not communist. Yugoslavia was not communist at the end. The Communist Party accepted the notion of Yugoslavia at the beginning, at the end of 20s, 30s. The, uh, the Communist parties are always Croatian, Slovene. That they, uh, of course, that was Communist Party of Yugoslavia because the Yugoslavia was, was the state. But the notion of Yugoslavia as a progressive. Uh, yeah. As a part of pro progressive uh, anti-fascist and uh, socialist research pro project, it was uh, inscribed in, in the documents of, Com of Communist Party at the end of the 20s. It, it, Yugoslavia as a project was uh, invented in the late 19th century by the especially Serbian bourgeoisie and uh, 
And well, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm familiar with the, with the origin, and it's not uh, communist, but that's what I'm pointing out. Despite the fact that it did not originate, it was hijacked in a sense. It was, it was described with a different kind of a, a program, a different kind of identity, which was emancipatory and, and political. It, it did happen, and what I'm saying is it could happen again. But you need to walk. <laughs> Okay, uh, see, we don't get one. Okay. Uh, my, my question is related to Primo. I mean, uh, w why is this notion of uh, a calm, I mean, this notion of an, um, a military union less ideological than a notion of an European uh, union? Of, of because the Mediterranean has, uh, has shared the history and shared politics. There, there are countries who are now in the crisis and who had the history of, of a military or, let's say, neo-fascist dictatorship, and they, they entered the European Union and run these processes under uh, the same circumstances. So it's based on a, on a historical analysis. While, while Europe, I mean, well, I mean, what is Europe? Is it, um, is it countries that, uh, that came from Ottoman Empire? Is it, um, is it Holy German, Holy Roman German Empire? I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't have any, any actual, uh, it doesn't have any basis on any actual historical research. If you say Europe, you have a conglomerate of different histories, and I think it makes sense to, to make alliances based on shared history, like, for example, example, um, shared, uh, shared history of, of socialism, that, that would make sense. Yeah, okay, but you don't, I mean, you don't repeat the same favor to the uh, uh, Europe. I mean, also the level of the Europe, you have some institutional inertia, which is the European Union. I mean, the history of uh, European integration is just as long as the uh, history of uh, Yugoslavian integration. I mean, <coughs> of course, this notion of Europe, uh, something that uh, 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 transcends the European Union is ideological, but uh, I mean, the European U Union itself uh, is very real. I mean, it has its institutional ex existence. I mean. Yeah, but the, the, in the context of European Union, the whole the ideological notion of Europe serves to, uh, to, to mask or mystify the real, really existing inequalities within the European Union. It serves precisely to, to conceal. The, the core periphery uh, um, uh, uh, relations. So basically to be able to, to perceive it as uh, unequal relations of, of domination and subordination, uh, domination on one hand and subordination on the other, you have to already mentally break with the notion of Europe, whether you recognize it or not, as Europe as a, as a notion of unity, of progress, of cultural, or whatever superiority of a development model. So you have already discarded it. Now, now you just have to uh, declare it. I mean, if, if we talk about core and periphery, we have already emancipated ourselves from this notion of Europe. We can just declare it. I mean, <laughs> uh, no, nobody will miss it. I mean, we will not be uh, worse off if we, if we declare it openly. Yeah, but I think th there can be some historical continuity. Like, I mean, like Marcus said, I mean, this notion of uh, Yugoslavia was at the beginning a bourgeoisie notion of uh, uh, some uh, Yugoslav uh, 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 um, class. I mean, what, I, what I'm trying to say that I, mean, that I, I don't see here any historical necessity. I mean, I think this notion of Euro European Union, as, as it is uh, currently manifested in the, its, its, its institutions, it can be emancipated from this uh, uh, um, class nature. May I support this? <laughs> I, 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 I propose not to close an open question. That's the only problem. Not to close an open... I mean, it's open to class struggle. It's open to historical evolution. And, and uh, like Yugoslavia was open, uh, what permitted the second Yugoslavia to be built is because they were the common uh, enemy. Hmm? Uh, the, the fascism and so on. To, uh, secondly, the notion of co-periphery uh, that we use, uh, both of us use, uh, but I, I use it with a little bit more um, nuance than you do, because historically, co-periphery relationships are in the, the world system based on market relationships. If you have no political uh, 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 
framework to organize this core periphery uh, is similar to the European Union. Historically. So you can make analogy and say there are elements of core peripheries in the European Union, but only elements. Where, who, where is Italy? Where is France exactly? Uh, even. Uh, uh, I mean, and, and the, 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 the institutional construction of European Union is much more contradictory than the one you describe. You make, you make an, abstraction, an abstraction of Europe uh, with the, 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 the concept of core periphery and Europe like that without making a concrete analysis of the contradictions of the European Union. I agree completely with what, with what has been said on the, the short-term issue and uh, inequality. I have no problem of, I don't, I have nothing to do with saving the European Union or the Euro uh, uh, and I have uh, no uh, argument against the, 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 the Greece going out of it, but there are di uh, different ways of going out of it. I mean, like in the Yugoslav, uh, uh, Yugoslav system, that is, the dominant uh, republics could get rid of Kosovo, could get rid of the, the, the backward, let us, in quotes, backward republics, yes? There were also core and periphery relationship within U uh, Yugoslavia, even the second? Yeah? Yes. Uh, there were elements of that. There were elements. But you could have political and social uh, struggle against this, because there was no legitimacy for this. And there was also a, a social construction and history where you could find some cohesion against this kind of <laughs> So I have written the book with, with, uh, again, uh, on the question of Yugoslav dismantling, uh, saying that it is a question for Europe. Because similar questions were raised in Yugoslavia, developed and less developed countries, national issues and social issues, democratic issues at what level. How do you control the whole process in order not to reproduce inequalities and uh, uh, neo-colonial kind of relationship in the economy and so on? Similar questions are raised uh, for European construction. Why was it open for Yugoslavia and would, would not it be co open for European? Uh, I have no answer for Europe, it's independent. But uh, uh, we, we must uh, uh, leave open what is, what is uh, open and uh, build uh, a struggle uh, at, uh, in with internationalist solidarity with people be in the Euro or not. Uh, but be careful, Greece can be pushed out of the <coughs> European Union for bourgeois reason. And with a very, uh, uh, absolutely, uh, and be, and, and the question is what is the best uh, uh, concrete solidarity with the Greek uh, people today. First, to refuse the treaties, to refuse the plan. At what level? Only at the Greek level? No, at the European level we have to refuse that. That will help immediately. It's not a long term. It's not at all a long term <coughs> issue that I'm raising. It's immediate issue. Uh, John, and then I, uh, I uh, beg you to conclude uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> the debate because we are, we are slightly running out of time. And uh, so I suggest that uh, only two or three replies, and then we will have a five minutes break, but really five minutes break, and then uh, a lecture from Professor Elizabeth Dorn. So, um, <laughs> Professor Rick. <Wicks. coughs> President Roosevelt once said that. Uh, the advising speaking said that be clear, be brief, be seated. Uh, and uh, I'll try to do that. I think that, uh, well, in, uh, in the early 1960s, Charles de Gaulle said, I'm not, uh, Charles, Charles de Gaulle said, I'm not anti German, I want three Germany. Uh, and, uh, I mean, not the East, West, and Austria. Uh, I think if we're going to talk about rebuilding something called Europe, we have to confront the German problem. Uh, it's very hard for me to imagine a reconstructed, progressive Europe with Germany as it is now. Uh, I think, um, I'm going to try imagine, for example, could you reconstruct a progressive Soviet Union? 
I don't think so. I think you would have to break up Russia in order, in order to do it because you would end up having the same types of, of uh, national domination. And I think somehow the German issue question again has to be confronted by people who want a united Europe.